my name is Ellen and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Photograph by Ed Sheeran on the guitar. So stay tuned if this is something that you'd like to learn. And really quick before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor, Enya Music. Enya's newest guitar model, the Next G, can simplify your life by being a one-stop shop for any musician. Not only does the smart guitar have many useful features like a built-in preamp, onboard tuner, integrated sound card, and multiple effects, but it's also the first of its kind to double as a Bluetooth speaker. With the click of a button, you can pair your Next G with the included wireless microphone, allowing you to perform your favorite songs all from the convenience of your guitar. So if you're interested in trying out this sleek new design that comes in multiple different colors, make sure to check out the link in my description box below. Alright guys, so this song is actually going to be really beginner friendly. Go ahead and make sure your guitar is in standard tuning and we're going to put our capo on the 4th fret in order to play this in the original key. On top of that, I only have 4 chords to show you and none of them are bar chords so they're all open which is perfect for beginners. And I also have only one strumming pattern to show you that you can use to apply for the whole song and it sounds really great. Um, at the end I will also show you the kind of intro tab that you hear in the song so that can push it a little bit more towards the intermediate side, um, but besides that it is very beginner friendly, so let's go ahead and jump into it and we'll start with the chords. Alright guys, so I've zoomed in a little bit to take a closer look at these chords. Like I said, there are only four chord shapes you need to know to play the whole song, and we're going to start with our C, which looks like this, and sounds like this. By the way, if you don't know how to read these chord charts that you're seeing on screen, I do cover that in my beginner series, episode 3, and so I will link that right here for those of you who need it. Um, but moving on, our next chord shape is our A minor, which looks like this, and sounds like this. After that, we have our G suspended 4, which looks like this, and sounds like this. And the last chord shape you need to know is our F over C, which looks like this and sounds like this. And those are the only four chords you need to know to play the song. So like I always say, if any of these chord shapes are new to you, go ahead and pause the video and take a few moments to practice memorizing them, as well as practice transitioning back and forth between them. This does really help you move on and get the song faster as we move down with strumming and things like that, so go ahead and just take some time to do that. I do cover how to transition between chords a little bit faster in my beginner series in episode 6, so I will link that right here for you guys, but once you've done that, we can move on to the strumming pattern that I want to show you for this song. We keep this love in a photograph We made these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts are never broken So you already know it's coming. I always like to start you guys off with a practice pattern which is just one simple down strum on the beat for every chord change. I always suggest beginners start like this because it can really help you like get oriented with the song and where you're going to be doing chord changes as well as practice singing and playing at the same time. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of quickly go through this. Um, you can see the chord transitions here on screen. For most of the verses we're going to go from C to A minor to G sus4 to F over C. And um, with this single down strum pattern we're just going to play each of these chords twice. So let's go ahead and go through an example. We'd start with our C. One, two, three, four, again, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, to G sus four, three, four, again, two, three, four, to F over C, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So if you can do that for the whole song, it'll really help kind of put everything together and it'll really, really help for people who are having trouble singing and playing at the same time. So let's go ahead and put the first verse here up on screen and we're just gonna practice singing through it a little bit with a single down strum just so you can see how it all comes together. Love it can hurt One, two, three, four. Love it can hurt Two, three, four, strum, two, three, four. 
All right, so basically you would just want to take this single down strum pattern, go through the rest of the song on your own, just to make sure you know where those chord transitions are going to be. You can actually do this right now. I have this whole guide available on my Patreon page for you to download and print out and practice this practice pattern all the way through. Um, so I will make sure to link that in the description box below as well as in this iCard right up here. But after you've done that, we can move on to the strumming pattern that you can use for the rest of the song. All right guys, so the strumming pattern I have to show you is not that much harder than the practice pattern. As you can see, it's just eight down strums and it's gonna sound a little something like this. So now that you've heard the rhythm, let's go ahead and put on our C chords and just play through it a few times so you can get used to how the beat goes. So we're just gonna have eight down strums and I'll count us in. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, you could already hear it something that I am adding to this strumming pattern is accented beats so basically I'm gonna go ahead and underline some of these down strums on screen and what I want you to do for those is we're just going to put a little bit more of an energy to our strum on just those accented beats just the underlined ones so instead of going one two three four five six seven eight which can make the guitar sound a real a little bit stale and boring we're going to accent the first the fourth and the seventh down strum so if you're counting it in your head it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. If you add those accents in there, it really does help drive the rhythm for this song. So let's go ahead and practice putting in those accents and let's also go ahead and put in some chord changes. So again, we're going from C to A minor to G suspended four to F over C. And we're going to hold this strumming pattern out two times for each of those chords. So let me count us in and we'll go ahead and do this together. One, two, ready, go. C. Again. A minor. Again. Don't forget those accents. G suspended. Twice. F over C. Nice. And then once you can do that, that's basically a pattern that you can apply to the whole song. So let's go ahead and put verse one back up on screen again. And we're gonna use this pattern to play through this verse, okay? So remember to double up the strumming pattern twice for each of these chords. Loving can hurt. Apologies for my singing in this video. This song is actually really high for me. Um, but with that being said, the strumming pattern can be used and applied for the entire song, and it sounds really good with the original recording. One last little thing, though, that I did want to put in here that's totally optional is you can add a palm mute. So basically what I'm doing is taking the side of my pick hand, resting it close to my bridge here on my guitar, and you can hear when you strum now, it has a little bit more of a muted sound. So this is regular and this is muted, all right? So it's basically just not ringing as much. If you can apply that palm mute to this pattern, it just extra makes it a little bit more rhythmic and sounds really good. So let me just go ahead and show you what this pattern sounds like with the palm mute. So go ahead and play with me if you know how to palm mute. One, two, one, two, ready, go, C. kind of hear how that goes with Ed Sheeran's um, version. Um, if you do need a little bit more help with palm muting, by the way, I do have a whole video just by itself on that. So make sure to check that out if you need it. I will say for my little cover at the end, I like to palm mute the verses and the pre-choruses, and then I like to let the choruses ring a little bit more just because it makes it a little bit more dynamic. And I think it sounds pretty good. So if you want to mimic that, um, I will have all of that in my playthrough at the end. But now that we have the strumming covered, let's go ahead and zoom in in a 
little bit and take a closer look at this intro tab. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle this little solo tab that you hear at the beginning of the song and it kind of repeats a little bit in the middle as well. So um, remember this tab that you're seeing on screen is all going to be relative to your capo, okay? So um, let's go ahead and just start. I would like you to put your C chord shape down. I think that this is the easiest way that I have found to play this little solo. So if you want to you know, follow me, I'm gonna be putting my C chord shape down. And basically we're going to pick the A string first, then the B string, then remove your first finger and then pick it open and then put it back on. Then we're gonna go next door, open G. Then we're gonna do the third fret of the D string. And what I'm gonna do here is I like to put my pinky down on that and cover it with my pinky. And then take your pinky off to do second fret, okay? So that whole C chord is like this. you're not used to using your pinky for you know these types of tabs and stuff this is a really great song to practice it on because we will be using our pinky a lot so for the C chord you're going to want to repeat this tab twice so we have again. Right. and of course you do kind of want to follow the rhythm that you hear in the original song so it sounds a little bit more like more like this. Right. So go ahead and practice and make sure that you have that C chord down because the rest of the uh, tablature is going to be really similar. Um, so moving on, the next chord is going to be kind of like our A minor, but all I want you to do for this is on your C chord shape, just take off your ring finger, okay? But your middle finger and your first finger are still right where they were. So this tab now is going to start with our open A string. Then it's the same here. So we go to the B string, one, open, one, and then next door to G, open. And then again, I'm going to use my pinky here for the D string on the third fret. And then you just take it off and your second finger should already still be there. Okay. So our A minor looks like this. Um, if you wanted to, you could also use your ring finger for those last two notes. I like to use my pinky just to keep it consistent, you know, with all of these chords. So again, with the A minor chord, you're going to want to do this twice and putting it in rhythm, it'll sound a little more like this. So you can already see between the C and the A minor chord shapes, it's very similar. All you're doing is removing your ring finger. Right? So that gets us into our G sus4 chord shape. What I want you to do here is again, do not move your middle or your first finger. Just take your ring finger and reach over to the third fret of your low E string, okay? And then if you can do that, again, the pattern is gonna be the same. So this time, instead of the A string, we're gonna pick our low E string. But then the rest of this should look very familiar. B string goes one, open, one, next door to G, open. And then again, I'm using my pinky here on the D string and then take it off. All right, so G sus4 again is like this. All right, and then in rhythm, it would sound more like this. So again, from C to the A minor to the G suspended four um, part of this tab, 
it's very similar. Your left hand's not really doing much moving, okay? You're starting with your C shape, you're taking off your ring finger, and then you're putting it back on the third fret of the low E string. So, so far we have this. F over C chord is where our left hand is going to be a little bit different. So um, you can see the tab on screen right now. If you have a different way that you would like to finger this, like by all means, do whatever's most comfortable for you. How I like to play this is I will put my first finger here on the low E string on the first fret, and I'll put my middle finger here on the first fret of the B string, okay? And what that allows me to do is kind of keep a little bit of the same fingering as the previous chords. So I go one, one, then I take off my middle finger, open, one, next door. And then again, I like to use my pinky here. And then this time I have to put my ring finger down because it's not already down. Um, if you wanted to, you could, you know, just leave your ring finger here as well. So basically your last chord is going to look kind of like this for your left hand. You're going to go one, one, take it off, open, put it back on, one, next door, and then pinky, and then ring finger. Alright, so F over C is like this. And for the F over C, we're only going to play this um, little picking pattern once. So in rhythm, it would sound more like this. And then from here, you just want to strum your F over C chord. Um, I actually strum it mostly with like the bar chord version of F, but if you wanted to do your non-bar, you could just strum the F over C. You're just going to strum it once to end the little solo there. All right, so um, to put the whole thing together, this will take a little bit of practice. Just make sure that you are, you know, practicing your left hand mostly. I feel like for me, that was the hardest part. If you're not used to using a pick on your right hand, that can also be a little bit challenging. So just give yourself time to learn this. But once you can get it all together and at tempo, the whole solo tab will sound like this. Again, that just goes at the beginning of the song and you can kind of hear it again just the beginning part of it between the chorus and the second verse but that is how I have found to be the easiest way to play the solo tab so make sure to go ahead and pause the video and practice that if you want to but when we come back we can put everything we learned together in this tutorial to play through the whole song Want to jam out to the rest of the song with me? 
then make sure to check out my Patreon page where you can unlock access to this as well as all my other fast track and play along tutorials. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description box below as well as in this iCard right up here. Alright guys, but that ends my tutorial today. I really hope that you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below as well as subscribe to my channel. That way you never miss out on any other new tutorials. I wanted to give another huge thank you to Enya Music for sponsoring this video as well as a special shout out to all of my top patrons over on my Patreon page. I will have all of their names listed on screen right now. And of course I'd like to thank all of my patrons on Patreon for making videos just like this one possible. You guys rock. Here are my social media sites in case you'd like to follow me on any of those. That's just where I do fun things like behind the scenes looks at things coming up. I'll pull you guys on what you want to learn next and I'll even do giveaways on there a few times a year so make sure to check it out. But um, I think that ends this tutorial so thank you again so much for watching. I really hope it helped and I will see you in my next one. Bye! Wait for me to come home